Hello friends. The dance on the sublime. We have already covered uh, uh, three points. Two of them are inborn, like the power of great thoughts, and the second one, power of great emotions, expressing emotions. These are inborn qualities. And the remaining three of these, the first one we have seen, that is uh, figures of thoughts, amplification, emulation, and uh, vivid visualization and figures of language or figures of expression. We have seen anaphora, ascendant, and uh, questions, interrogations, then um, we have got a poly, poly, polypopta, polypoptan, polypopta, polypoptan is singular. These are all figures of expression, isn't it? And now we see the fourth one, the fourth is uh, noble diction, noble diction. This is the fourth source of, fourth source of what you call uh, sub, the sublime. And what is noble diction? Proper, choosing the proper words and using them in the right place. That is noble diction. You choose the striking words, see. When you have got to use striking words in the exact place, it wonderfully enthralls and also attracts the hearers as well as the readers. Understand that? The exact word. Now, exact words in the exact uh, place, a simple example I'll tell you. See the word study and learn. When you say, you study a subject and learn a skill. You don't, you don't usually say, no, I learn a subject. No. So there the choice is, if it is skill, it is learn. If it is subject, it is study. Otherwise, what will happen? It will produce a kind of, you know, some, what you can say, something that you have, that has, that hurts you, your feelings. So that is the proper choice of words. And wonderfully, and it is said about Damasthenes, that he could infuse life into a dead body. See, something that is dead. He could make it active and put life into it by choosing and using the right words and describing things. So that was so powerful, was it? Understand that? It's so powerful. As you can see, the quality of mercy is not strained in their speech in the Merchant of Venice, the Portia, Portia speech. So I mean, this I may not quote it because so familiar one. If I quote it, you will say that, oh sir, we have heard it hundred times. Isn't it? Then the other one, remember, the seven stages of me. See, the proper use of words. Appropriate. Appropriate words are chosen and then used. Quintilian, famous rhetorician, says that this is the use of troops. Troops. T R O P E S. Troops. That is pronunciation. So it is troops, this is troops. So that is figures so of, see the, what do you call uh, this metaphor, then metonymy, synecdoche, oxymoron and so on. Metaphor is very powerful. Met when, when, when you feel like using metaphor is when you are, when you are uh, heart is filled with emotion. Isn't it? So there the question is that some people eat for the sake of eating. Some people eat when they are hungry. So it is like this. When you actually feel uh, the situation demands, you should use metaphor. Not always for any trivial things, silly things like that. Don't use metaphors. That's the point. So don't use metaphor for the sake of using it, but for enlightening. The proper use of metaphor will enlighten. So according to Quintilian, you do anything but transcend the lexical meaning. You should transcend the lexical meaning. That is noble diction means. See if we say, oh I am standing at the foot of the hill. That is transcending the transcending the lexical meaning. Or I have a needle. It's difficult, it's impossible for a 
It's possible for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle, but this is impossible for a rich man to enter heaven. And it may not be the exact words, but this is what is meant. So then, that eye of needle, that brightens your understanding, it broadens your understanding, it throws light on what you, are, what you want to say. You understand, that's the point. And if you go through you find all great writers, they do it. The wasteland is a metaphor. The title itself is a metaphor. The rock not taken, frost, metaphor. Isn't it? It's a metaphor. And then, say, uh, uh, last class I told you, Polonis asked the uh, Polonis question to Hamlet, what do you read? Words, words, words. So words stands for many things. So one or two. Uh, Whitman's, oh captain, my captain. That's my metaphor. Buddha said, oh Lincoln, my president. Instead of that he said, oh captain, my captain. See that is expressing in a sailing to Byzantium. It is a metaphor. Eternal. And something that is eternal. That will not be, that, is, that will not come under or it will remain forever. The permanence of art. Understand? When Michael says at the height of his feeling, out, out, brief candle. See? Metaphor. Out, out, brief candle. Harmless. When we, when we have shuffled off this mortal coil, when we will have shuffled off this mortal coil, this death, the to be and not to be speech, or not to be speech, when we have shuffled off. The seven stages of man, so it is a metaphor, seven stages of man, metaphor. So, great like this, make use of metaphors. It is not an added embellishment, it is part of that, part of the, uh, that piece. Listen, listen. I have now been turning uh, an object that is an object is expressed by something that is connected to it or linked to it. Example is a tongue for lang la tongue for language. Mother tongue is not mother language. So tongue is metonymy. Understand? Tongue is metonymy. Always a synagogue. That is part for the whole and whole for the part. India wins the match. Match. India wins. Means Indian team. Listen, that is. So, it, what does it do? It, it magnifies. India wins the match. Magnifies. Indian team, that is. It's a small thing, but you are making it a big thing. Isn't it? So, metaphor. Synecdo he maintained oxymoron. Irregularly, regularly, regular. <laughs> so you, when you hear that, you are attacked. Oh, you sound like you are regularly, regular. Or you understand? Hot ice cream. Hot gentleman gunda. So that is gentleman gunda. That is oxymoron. Seemingly contradictory. So these are the troops that you should use, you can use, provided. There is a context for it. Understand? For example, you cannot say, before going to bed, you cannot say, out, out, brief candle. <laughs> that will be using, using such a wonderful expression in a very trivial way. You should not do that. And also, you should not be so too concise. Too concise, with too, what is it, aphorisms, aphoristic. Aphoristic, um, Bacon uses a voice. Study several for the rest for one hour for the rest. In Bacon, it is not a defect. But for ordinary people, when they write, it will be, it will be a defect. Concise, too concise is not good. Too trivial also is not good. Understand? So, that is noble diction means. No, but when the emotion is such a torrent that you cannot resist it, an irresistible torrent, 
There are no other way but to use troops like this. So that, then we have shuffled dog, dismantled coil. And the other laws put out the light and then put out the light. Metaphor. And what is the meaning of metaphor? Metaphor means carry to the other one. Meta means the other. Metaphysics. Other physics. So meta means the other. Further means carry. That is a ferry service. Is it? Carrying from one shore to other. Ferry service. So metaphor. So one mean, literal meaning is carried to some other thing. One meaning is carried to or transferred to another thing. Understand? That is, well, I, just now I gave examples of I and foot. I and foot literal meaning, you know. But the, the, the figurative meaning is something different. So, choosing the right words, using them in the right place, then whenever possible, Whenever the situation demands using troops like synecdoche, metonymy, oxymoron, and metaphor, not other, depending on the context, that is no benediction. So that is the source of. Sorry. When Shakespeare says, when Shakespeare says, see, the, the morning russet mantle cloud walks over yon high eastern hills. The morning. Rasat Mangal clad walks over yon high eastern hills. The whole thing is a metaphor. So the one after another you get metaphors. So this is what we call this personification also. Okay. This. Understand. So this is how you great right is the the the, the, the great right is they produce uh, such an effect now. The effect of the sublime. There you are. So choosing order, that's an order. This is an order also. That's right. Metrical language makes sublime. Metrical language. So uh, that is noble diction, I think. And the fifth and the last source of last source is. Dignified composition. Dignified and elevated composition. Dignified and elevated composition. Means there should be an order. An order in poetry is meter. It's been an order. Yes. Or it is like Pulling together all the threads. We have started with it. We pull them together and tie. That is dignified composition. Dignified and the elevated composition. Yes. Harmony of language. The harmony of language. The harmony of phrases. The harmony of building one phrase upon the other. A fitting conclusion. Yes. The best example is. I would say the classic example is John Dunn's poem, A Valediction for Bidding Morning, and uh, you have got the compass image. Isn't it? Perfect conclusion of the argument. There was an argument, and there's a perfect conclusion towards the ends. Isn't it? Daffodils, the, or the great odds of uh, John Keats. The Solitary Reaper by Wordsworth. Poems. So you find a wonderful conclusion you find. There is, a, there is an order. There is an organic unity. And when then is compares this organic unity to the organic unity of the different parts of the human body. The, the human body has been so well unified. So there is an order in that. Not even a single part can be moved and uh, fitted in another place. If you do that, the whole thing is gone. Understand? This is what the Adorno says, no? You know, when we were discussing Adorno's cultural history, he says, 
the difference between culture, industrial products, culture, cultural products as industrial, industry, like the multiplication of what is called copying and things like that, or a template, you know, this template, one template is taken, then certain things are removed, then another one is made. But in our organic, or what do we say? Great works of art. If you move the one point, then the entire thing will collapse. And in classical music, kirtanas, how beautifully they have been set. If you remove one knot from there, one, any of those lines, then the whole thing is lost. That is what you call the great works of art. So that is a test. If you want to know, whether there is an organic unity for a for a, a work of art, try to remove something from there. Then it, the whole thing is lost. But what about cinematic dance? You can remove any part and add any part. But on the other hand, but by Bharatanati, see that? Can you remove some parts and then add something else? The whole piece is lost. So that is the difference between cultural industry and organic art. Understand? That is it. So you know, in an organic unity, a piece or a tiny part cannot be taken out. Then the whole thing is lost. Just imagine your human body. A part is taken, you are lost. Understand? So, that is elevated conversation means. This is so fitting and proper. Appropriate words are used. There is an order. The order is organic. Therefore, once you take something out of it, it is, it is not that thing. That thing, it becomes a different thing. If that is the situation, then you can say that there is organic unity. Elevated conversation. Dignified composition, fitting conclusion. There, as you can see, all the all the sonnets of Shakespeare, very famous. No? See, the conclusion comes. There is an argument, and there is a at the end there is a conclusion. Any sonnet of the hundred and fifty, you take any one, you will find that there is such a such a fitting conclusion. So that is elevated and then that is proper, made full and perfect organism. That is the composition, building phrase upon phrase. So that two things. One is arrangement of arrangement, arrangement of words, and order. order. And secondly. Organic unity. Organic unity. You compare industrial products, cultural industry. There's no organic unity at all. This is like you can take, suppose there are hundred TV sets. You take one part, then you can replace it. But in an organic composition, you can never, never do it. One lion is lost, the whole thing is lost. Listen. So these are the sources of supply. They have given you examples also, isn't it? So, to conclude, what is supply? Now you will understand better if I say, that is, the power to move you, the power to transport you, not our not <laughs> transport bus, but transport you to transcend or to uplift you, or to take you to the height of heights, or to take you to the majesty of God, or to take you near the seat, the seat of Zeus, Hypsos, higher than the seat of Zeus, that's the, if you put it that way, where it means, higher than the seat of Zeus, the God of God, that you, how can you do this? 
There are five, five sources for that. Elevation is the key word there. Elevation. Uplifting. Transcending. And that is without your knowledge. That's it. You, should, you are not conscious of this, but you, you are mesmerized, hypnotized. You are mesmerized and hypnotized. That is elevation. That is sublime. Sublimity. That's it. Yeah. And I say the once again, I will list now I think you you will if you remember this thing you will see how you how these five sources uplift you or transport you or move, move you to the upper levels of uh, appreciating art, aesthetics. First, first one is, first is the power of great conceptions, the power of, power of great conceptions means grandeur of thought, grandeur, or you can say grandeur, grandeur of thought. Grandeur of Then you have grandeur of thought. That is first one. As we have already seen all examples, I will not repeat this again. Second is the power of power of expressing expressing great most passions, not emotion, emotion is, yes, and these two, they are inborn, you cannot acquire, they are inborn, gift, talent, vasanas, may be given by the Almighty. If you have got benevolence, and if you have got the love of truth, so you need two things to reach the power, to the seat of Zeus. Yeah, benevolence. And a cruel person cannot do this. No? A, pe a person always thinking of bad things and uh, scheming and uh, creating problems for others. He cannot. His mind has to be fine. Your mind has to be so refined and pure. Only then you will be able to reach the sublime. And second is benevolence and the love of truth. Then you can reach the seat of Zeus, the majesty of God. And then third is, from here you have got acquirable, acquirable qualities. Means that is by your general reading, exposure, etc. And of this, the first is the first is figures of speech and expression or language, is it? Expression. And you have got the amplification and so on. Emulation, amplification, emulation, and the is posterity will judge. And then all rhetorical devices. No? As we saw yesterday, and of all, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness. And then the fourth is noble diction. Use of Tropes, use of tropes to transcend the lexical meaning. That's the point. To transcend the lexical meaning. For that you can use synecdoche, metonymy, oxymoron, and uh, metaphor. The, uh, you, can, you can have a paradox. Anything you can use. And it is yes. <laughs> yes, lots of them. Yeah. And the fifth is uh, dignified, dignified, 
and elevated conversation. Then we have to see two very important things. One is order. There should be an order, arrangement, proper arrangement. Arrangement and secondly, organic unity. Organic unity to test. The test of organic unity is what the test of organic unity? Whether you can remove a part from it and still it remains the same. Or replace it. If you cannot do it. As I told you, example size of classical. Classical dances, for example. Cinematic dance, we can remove any parts. So in snow, suppose you are moving your hands like this. And then if you don't if you don't like it or there is a pain in your wrist, you can so, no problem. <laughs> so, no problem. But, if there is a thing like this, classical dance, you have to do it like this. Otherwise, and the finger should be like this. There is no other way. That is what can be your I hope you have... Oh, today this is our fifth class, isn't it? Fourth, fifth, yes. So I forgot to change the number, the sixth class. So I, I hope that you have enjoyed my exposition of this concept, that is the sublime by Longinus. And Longinus, although we do not know who actually wrote this, Cassius Longinus, some people, Dionysius Longinus, some people say these things we have already discussed. Whatever it is, this classic statement about aesthetics. Not doubt about it. Reading that, you will be moved, you will be transported, you will be elevated. And in that elevated mode of sublime and sublimity, I 